everyone and welcome back. Today we are talking more about POTS and the different types of POTS or causes of POTS. Now there are three main subtypes of POTS along with a secondary POTS meaning it is caused by another condition. So I'm going to be going over each one of these. I'm going to name them off and then we'll spend a little bit of time on each one in more detail. So I'm going to read you a little ditty that I found on the Johns Hopkins, John Hopkins. I have never been able to say this word, which is probably why I didn't get in. Just kidding. I never applied. But the Johns Hopkins medicine.org has an interesting and concise little ditty that I wanted to read to you guys. And it's with regard to the types and causes of POTS. So it says the causes of POTS vary from person to person. Researchers don't entirely understand the origins of this disorder, as we've talked about a lot on my channel. The classification of POTS is the subject of discussion, but most authorities recognize different characteristics in POTS, which occur in some patients more than others. Importantly, these characteristics are not mutually exclusive. So I wanted to read that because it's very important to understand that a person can have more than one of these types of POTS existing in their body at the same time. So the first type of POTS we're going to talk about is neuropathic POTS. And what this means is it's a term to describe POTS that is associated with damage to the small fibers in your body, the small fiber nerves that are in your bodies. It's also called small fiber neuropathy. And so these nerves regulate the constriction of blood vessels in the body, such as your limbs or your abdomen. And so when these are damaged, you can experience POTS and have poor circulation. So the second type is hyperadrenergic POTS. And this is used to describe a type of POTS that is associated with elevated stress hormones in the body, such as norepinephrine. The third type is hypovolemic POTS or low blood volume. So people with this type of POTS present usually with an abnormally low level of blood in their body or hypovolemia. Now there's also secondary POTS like I mentioned and so that means that POTS is associated with another condition known to potentially cause autoimmune neuropathy, you know, these different things such as diabetes, lupus, and other autoimmune disorders. When you have these, this may cause you to have POTS, but POTS may not be, you know, on its own there if you didn't have these other existing conditions. So say you have diabetes and as a result you get POTS, but you get your, pot, your diabetes completely under control and well managed, well then maybe your POTS symptoms would dissipate altogether. So those are the three main types of POTS and I am going to discuss a little bit more in detail with each one. So let's start with the neuropathic POTS. So neuropathic POTS. Neuropathic actually just means nerve disease. So the nerve supply to the vessels in the lower part of your body also known as the sympath sympathetic nerves, it's responsible for the constriction of your blood vessels. So they're supposed to tighten and squeeze and constrict the blood vessels so that your blood can flow back up to the heart and to your brain, uh, especially when you are standing. And with someone with neuropathic POTS, this is not happening. Therefore, you're getting blood pooling in the legs and getting all sorts of symptoms because you're your blood is not circulating throughout your body like it should. And when we don't get blood back up to the heart, our heart rate is going to skyrocket. And when we're not getting it up to our brain, we're gonna be having brain fog, you know, we're gonna be lightheaded, dizzy, you know, a lot of people even pass out, you know, it leads to a lot of different symptoms because of our blood not getting that good circulation and because of that nerve damage. So let's move on to the second type and let's talk about hyperadrenergic POTS. So hyperadrenergic basically just means high adrenaline. So adrenaline or noradrenaline, epinephrine, you know these stress hormones are natural stimulants that are already in our body and these are the same ones that regulate our fight or flight response. Say someone is having a panic attack and they perceive that they are in danger, that fight or flight response is going to engage and it's going to tell their body to flee because they have a perceived danger. Or if you are in the jungle and you see a lion coming at you, 
your fight or flight response is there to protect you and to keep you safe and you are going to bolt as fast as you possibly can. So these um, stress hormones are a protection for us when they are working properly. But in someone with hyperadrenergic pots, they have high levels of norepinephrine in their blood. So they're constantly getting their wires crossed and their signals are just haywire, they're anxious, their fight or flight response is engaged. And so when they're standing, um, these levels tend to rise uh, exorbitantly and this causes them to feel anxious, like I said, and have that fight or flight response, even when they are in a safe environment. And I touched on this on my recent video about my anxiety and what I've been experiencing because this is what has been happening to me. I've been having the fight or flight response engaged in me so often and for no perceived reason. So yeah, your, your heart is going to race, your blood pressure may be lower, um, there's often both both an increase in blood pressure and your heart rate when you're standing when you have hyperadrenergic pots. So this one is really not fun and not only do you get the physical symptoms but you have a lot of um, anxiety and mental health issues along with it. Let's move on to the third and we're going to be talking about hypovolemic pots. So when someone has hypovolemia, that just means that they have low blood volume in their bodies. And so if a person has this type of POTS, let's say they stand up, they don't have the adequate amount of blood to circulate through their body. Now conversely, to compare, a pregnant woman's blood volume increases substantially, like so much when they're pregnant. So they have all this blood circulating throughout their bodies and it's a good thing and it keeps their their body healthy and their baby alive. Now, when you have hypovolemia or hypovolemic POTS, again, you do not have a sufficient amount of blood supply in your body. So this is causing you to feel lightheaded, dizzy, you know, tachycardic because your body just does not have enough blood to circulate around. So it's just, yeah, that's pretty, uh, pretty much the basics of hypovolemic POTS. And then, you know, as we discussed, we talked about secondary POTS, which I pretty much already described. Um, a person can have a certain autoimmune disorder or diabetes. I like to use that as an example because it is so commonplace these days. But if they have very uncontrolled diabetes, this can cause all sorts of things to go haywire in their body. And POTS is one of those risk factors. And so, say they get that diabetes under control, like I mentioned earlier, then their POTS symptoms can completely dissipate. It's not because their body, POTS is not a primary disorder in their body. It's being caused by something else. Once you take that away, the POTS goes away. So that is one that I think is really important to talk about with your doctor because they need to investigate if you are experiencing POTS due to something else or if it is there on its own because that can provide you with a lot of hope. If you find out you have a certain autoimmune disorder or something else and you can get that better well controlled, then maybe your POTS symptoms can get improved if not removed from your body and that is excellent. So yeah, I think that's all I wanted to talk about today in this video. I just wanted to talk about the different types of POTS because there's a lot of questions surrounding that. Um, some doctors think it's not very important to know um, the difference between what type of POTS their patients have. Others think it does matter because it will change the protocol or the form of treatment that the patient is going to be getting. I mentioned recently in a video that I'm going to be going to my specialist and he's going to try to determine if I have hyperadrenergic POTS, but he says there are more similarities than differences in the treatment. But I am curious to know what the differences would be and how we would move forward with our treatment plan if I do in fact have hyperadrenergic POTS. And also just for peace of mind, it would be really good to know if that is the source of my increase in anxiety and panic attacks and just mental unrest for the past nine months. So yeah, that is my next step is to go see my specialist next month and kind of try to figure that out. I hope that this information was helpful for you in trying to figure out maybe what type you have. Again, you need to figure this out under the care of your doctor. 
but you know having the more information we have the more power we have and the more we can self advocate you know for ourselves and for our treatment because we just can't give up and we cannot always rely on the doctors to do their job fully and to investigate you know what is going on with our bodies you know that's the biggest thing that i have learned throughout this process is you have to self advocate for yourself and you have to do your own research especially when you're dealing with a chronic illness and a condition that is so not well known in the medical community even though it should be so i will end the video here i hope you're having a good day please stay safe and please stay healthy and i'll see you in the next video bye